All right, so here's the projectile motion in parametric equation. So it's exact same thing as what we've been doing, but now for parametric equation, we put x and y separately. So then example could be something like when we kick a ball. It will make a projectile motion. So now we're going to write two equations, one for the horizontal distance and one for the height. So x of t equals to, guess what v of 0 is? Initial velocity times cosine of the angle that the ball got kicked in close parentheses times t, which will be in time, seconds. And the y is negative 16 t squared for feet, if the units are in feet. This involves the gravity plus v0, initial velocity, times sine of the angle the ball got kicked, which is in theta, times t plus, guess what y0 will be? The initial height. So if you're kicking a ball, what will be the initial height of the ball? Zero. But if you're throwing a ball as a baseball, then your initial height will be most likely your height. Like for me, six feet, right? Almost six, yeah. So let's look at an example one. <laughs> at a watermelon seed splitting contest, a seed is launched with an initial velocity of 35 feet per second at an angle of 35 degrees and from an initial height of 5. So I guess the height of the person or here, you know, your mouth is 5. So write an equation. So you write x and y separately. So x of t and y of t, so x of t was what? v0, initial velocity, which was 35 feet per second, so 35 x. So it involves cosine of theta, which happened to be same as its velocity, 35. Close parentheses, and you multiply by t at the end. t does not go inside the cosine. That's a common mistake. What about t? The y, it's the gravity, negative 16 t squared, plus, same thing, 35, but now it is y, so it is sine of 35, close parentheses t, and you add the initial height, which was 5. So when you graph the parametric equation, now you have to reset the mode of the calculator. So you go to the calculator, click on mode, and they give us in degrees, 35 degrees. So your mode should be in degrees and next to the function, it should be parametric. So click on those two. Everyone, try it. Parametric. And then you go to y equals to, now they will have x and y separately. Yes. Parametric, we are, look at it, what did it give us? Degrees. So then you put 35 cosine of 35 degrees, close parentheses again, that's very important, you have to close the parentheses, and you multiply by t, and then you do negative 16 t, which is x, you can just press that variable button and then square it plus 35 now sine of 35 close parentheses times t and what was the initial height five okay but here comes the important part so what i like to do is if you can already see how far it's going to go up and how far you can set up your window but what i like to do is I do zoom fit, zoom zero. Then they're going to give you a general shape like this. What we need is this part right here, right? This is at, under the ground. In real life, the ball or seed will not go under the ground. So we know x, we can maybe get cut it in one third of what we have. And y, we don't need the negative. So we are going to just grab this piece right here. So go to Windows. And your t-step will be always 0.1. That makes a difference for our answer. So make sure you put 0.1 for t-steps. And x max, it's about 170. We said we we're going to cut it 
and one third. So let's do about 60. And why min is the height. So do we really want to know what happens after it hits the ground? No. So always set it equal to negative 2. Y min is always negative 2. Then hit graph. Isn't that what exactly we wanted to see? After it hits the ground, it stays on the ground, right? It doesn't go under. So that's what we have. So the question is, how far does it see travel? When you do second trace, like the other functions, you don't have all the other options. So the only option that we can do here for parametric is to just trace, just hit trace. And get closer to when y equals to 0, right? And you're going to just go ahead and find the closest value. So is, it, is 1.7, just give me one second, 1.7 closer to 0 or negative 0.88 closer to 0? Negative 0.88. So we're going to use this as our point, reference point. So how far did it travel? 43.885 feet, how far, that's x. When does it hit the ground? In 1.5 seconds. And the height was right under the ground. So that's what we're going to use. So I'll write 43.885. 40, yeah, 83.885 feet away. Oh, Yes. So again, window, it's important that you set the T step always 0.1. I'll show you what that does. X max was 60. No, no, no. Change it to 0.1. 11. Your equation is probably don't. Go back and check your equation. So guys, let me show you what the T-step do. Here's the equation. T is the time period that the calculator will project the motion of the ball. So if I change this to one second, how many positions are we going to get? It hit the ground in 1.5 seconds, right? So when you go to a graph after changing t-step to 1, you see how it gives you the position at 0, position of the ball at 1, and then it hit the ground. So it's not a smooth projectile motion. What if you make it really small? It will give you more accurate points, but I think point 0.1 is enough. If you do point zero zero one, for example, it's going to take a while to graph it. If you even do 0 0.0001, you can't stop it and it will take too long. So again, for homework, for formatives, always make your t-step equal to 0.1. So number two, so an arrow is shot from above four feet above the ground at an angle of 10. So this is the initial height. This is the angle. And the initial velocity was 25 feet per second. So x equals to 250 cosine of 10 t. Y equals to negative 16 t squared plus 250. Same thing, but now it's sine of 10 close parentheses. And make sure you put t plus the initial height, which is 4. Let's go ahead and plug into the calculator and graph it. The first question is asking how long was the arrow in the air? So we have to know when it hits the ground, the time when it hits the ground. And the horizontal this is how much it travels. So we have to find when it hits the ground what the x value is. And what's the maximum height? We have to find the maximum y. Okay. Again, so make sure your window is 0.1. And then I'll start it over, zoom zero. So I'm going to cut the x in half, y to negative 2. So I'll cut the y max to 800, a little more than half. 
And negative 2 for y min all the time. So 800, I said, not 8,000. So now you trace it. That's your x. x is the horizontal distance. So I have my x at 689. Now give me one second. Let me finish this and I'll check your... So when does it hit the ground? In 2.8 seconds. And then how far did it travel? 689.365. 689.6365. Away. And what's the maximum? You go find the highest y, 33 point, the high, 33.417, 33.417 feet high. 